Hi everyone, welcome back. Another little bit of a mishmash video, but I am going to be demonstrating something in a minute here. But first, I want to show you that I finished the star. And this is the heart, just so you can compare the sizes. Eight inch frame, a uh, six inch frame. But the when they measure the six inch, it's the inside of the frame from here to here. So this star is six inches across. Um, and so there's the size comparison. Let me zoom you in just a teensy bit. And I'll bring it up. I figure I have about 580 beads in here. I did way more beading than stitching. Um, there is, I don't want to get ink on it. There is stitching in here and in here and in here, um, all around here and on each one of the points of the stars under the beads, well, between the beads. And then the rest of this is all beads. And some of them are stacked. I don't know how well they will show up. But I'm very proud of it. Um, I think it came out really well. I put, zoom you back out. I put my signature in 2023 on the back. This is all glued down. I put a little hanger there. You wouldn't have to use the hanger if, it, if it'll sit on a nail or a command hook or something. You wouldn't have to use the hanger, but it's there. Um, the hanger is glued and stitched in. Same with this one. It has a hanger on it. Um, I decided my whole name was too long, so I'm not doing that anymore. Eventually, I'm going to get some labels to put on these. But anyway, that's the project for the um, art show at the Art Center in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And I have to have everything in, photographs. I don't know if they're gonna require a write-up. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, um, all right. So Janice asked me, I did, I did a, oh, I should have pulled it out. On my 52 day, my 100 day project, <laughs> I don't know where I got 52 from, um, I made a part. And I don't think I, I don't think it's in this one. Of course, I should have looked for this prior to doing this. But um, anyway, I did a heart on a piece of denim. And I just wanted to show um, how I did that. She asked how I did it. So I'm going to do a small heart and a small star. Um, I probably should just cut this right down the center or thereabouts. This is not denim from like jeans. This is denim from like um, just a fabric I bought. Now, what I'm going to do is because I can't draw anything with a darn and I wanted a smaller star than this, I'm going to trace the inside of this. Hopefully I can see it with this. I wish Friction made a, uh, a white pen. Yes, I have a white pen. It's really weird though, and I don't know if it'll work. Sometimes it sort of works and sometimes not. I think I can see that. Now, the question is, I don't know. I've never done the star before. So we're going to see. I'll do the heart first just in case. <laughs> um, she asked what threads I used. You can use six strands. You can use four or three or five or whatever you want. Um, you can also use a, this is a size eight. You can use a size five. Let me see if I even have a five because that would actually go way faster. Here's a five. I might use that instead. So, um, yeah, you just you, you use what you've got. It should work. Um, use the appropriate needle 
for the size thread you are working with. Um, so don't try to squeeze a six strand thread into a needle that is too small because what I have learned, and I'm no expert, is this needle, I think you can, let me zoom in, that needle, which is a chenille needle, is thicker than that needle. Now I'll bet I could get my size eight, maybe, thread through this needle, but I bet it would flow easier through my fabric if I used the chenille needle. I have different size chenille needles. Um, I have this one and I have this one and I have this one, which is bigger and thicker or maybe about the same as that, but this is thinner. So chenille needles come in different sizes. There are dull pointed. This is a dull chenille needle and that's a sharp chenille needle. So I would not use that one. Um, I am, I think that one and that one are the same. I just took one out that was new the other day. I would use this for the size eight. And for six strand, I would probably use either this needle, which I think is a, uh, it's a tulip needle for um, bullion knots. Shows up better there. So there you go. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You have to use what's appropriate for your thread. If you're sewing into a really tightly woven fabric, which this is not that tightly woven, um, a batik, a batik fabric is really tightly woven. Also, I'm not sure if it works on other shapes. Now that I think about it, I'm not sure I could do the star. I could try, but I'm not really sure it'll work. So I may have to try that off camera and come back and see if it works. I would come back and show you that. So let's try. I hid the end for myself. And it's best to try and have enough thread to do the whole thing. If you don't, I guess it's no big deal. But let's see. If I can get this thread fairly easily through this bullion needle. Yep, that wasn't hard. Now my thread is flowing fairly easily through this. There's a little drag on it. We'll see if it works. I do think that I used um, six strands of pink on the previous heart. I wish I could find the little, I should have pulled that out. I, I may go look for it and insert it somewhere. And what you do, boy, this is hard to see, the drawing I did. <laughs> So I hope this finds you well, and I hope that everyone had a fantastic holiday. Um, oh, see, I'm having a hard time pulling this through, this needle through this fabric. So I don't know. Now you're supposed to go, now I've gone from the inner point to the outer point on this heart. What you're supposed to do is come back up here to this where you started, next to where you started. I like to get fairly close because depending on how thick your or thin your thread is, you really don't want the fabric showing through. Now you're supposed to come back up there. Now see, you have a whole strand of thread on the back. And come, if you come up the left, you're gonna go down the right, okay? And you're just going to keep doing that around. I'm a cheapskate. So I am going to try and lower this light and see if it helps any or creates more shadows. Oof, I don't think that helped at all. Okay, 
It's a very gloomy day here. All right, so because I'm a cheapskate, <laughs> I don't want to waste all the thread on the back. So I'm a bad girl. Just like I don't backstitch by the rules. That's a little hair too close. I'm going to come up next to where I went down. And I'm not going to pull too tight because I don't want it to, I don't want it to be too loose, but I don't want to pull on that and buckle it, which is the other thing I don't like about going. So I'm on the right. I came out on the right. You're going to go down on the left. And see how it keeps crossing over? So Janice, this is for you. I hope this helps. You can do it either way. You can cross over the back or you can come up next to where you want to. And this is a heat erasable pen, so if I don't follow the line, I touch it up with the iron, just touch a warm iron to it, it disappears, or a hairdryer, or a hairdryer. See, now it buckled. You don't want it to buckle. And you can do this in a hoop if you want, a little, you know, four or three or four or six inch hoop, whatever size you're doing. I would not recommend doing a really big one. It takes a lot, a lot of thread. This is a thread eater. So I'm really glad I've been getting quite a few questions lately and that just excites me because I'm not a um, expert on anything. I know a little bit about a lot of things and a lot, well, probably 90% of what I know is from watching other people. So I'm not <laughs> the creator of this method. I saw it, I think, on Instagram, probably Instagram. Embroidery people pop up on my Instagram a lot. I don't follow them all, but they pop up there a lot. You know, you follow one and then they start sending you all kinds of them. If you're not on social media, look on YouTube. They have people doing hearts this way on YouTube as well. <clears throat> now, as I say, I don't know if this will work in a different um, shape, a circle. It would definitely work in a circle. Um, I am not following my line like I should. <laughs> bad girl. Bad, bad girl. I mean, there are no police here to, you know, shame me. But I'm sure someone would see that and say, that's not very perfect. But I'm the furthest from perfect you will ever get. So all I want to do is share and inspire and be inspired and have a good time. Oopsies. Now, I don't think this thread is going to make it all the way around, but so if you got something really good for Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or anything else, Boxing Day or anything else you might celebrate, and you're excited about it, share below. Especially if it was any kind of supply for crafting. I didn't because I get what I want throughout the year. Tony almost never says no to me. <laughs> um, sometimes I need to be told no. So there's that. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to keep going on this. I'm going to speed it up because this just might take a really long time. You do have to be careful and see it's starting to buckle, even though I'm not crossing it across the back. So you don't want it to be real loosey-goosey, but you don't want it to pull across the back. And I did pull twice there, and I don't want it to continue to be... I also need to follow my, my drawing a little better. Goodness gracious. Okay. All right. I will speed it up and stop talking now for your sake. Okay, well, there are some imperfections in here, as you can see. I haven't done this in a long time. There's a space there. There's a space there. There's a couple spaces over here. But all in all, it doesn't look too bad. I could go... back here... and fill in that kind of gap right there. There. Now you just don't notice so much. Could go back there and slide the needle under these stitches and go back up there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm out of thread anyway. So I hope this helps. Um, I'm going to go off and try the star. Ow, that hurt. Try the star and see if I can get that to work as well. So if I do, I will be back in this. I will be back in this video and show you how it went and what I did. And if not, then I'll come back and just say my goodbyes. 
So give me a moment. Okay, this is me trying the star. Let's see if I can space it a little better than I did the heart. I'm using six strand DMC floss. and a much larger needle so it's easier to get through the fabric. This would probably be way easier in a hoop. So if you have a hoop, you might want to try that. Spacing. Spacing is important. And it's also important to have a symmetrical design. So if you have like a die, like these are all thinlet dies to use. That's what I'm using here. Um, if you have those to use, I would suggest it. If not, whatever you do, make sure it is symmetrical on both sides. Or... Your shape will kind of get lost in the process. So I made sure that this point and that point going in. Is there another name for that? A mathematical name for that? <laughs> the outer point and the inner points are matching up. Now this is where I'm wondering how this is going to go because this is a straight line going across here. I think it should work. And like I said, these are thread eating projects. Imagine how much thread it would eat if you were going back and forth across the back of it as well. The only advantage that I know of, if you're going back and forth, oh, if you're going back and forth across the back of the project with your thread, is that it sort of pads it and makes it uh, almost three-dimensional like. And I don't know why that happened. Not good. I did not pull my thread all the way through to the knot. <laughs> so there you go. Just shows what I said. Perfection I am far from. An expert I am far from. Frustrating, I wasted that thread in the back. 
and I keep stretching and turning because it really does come all out of wonky doodle shape very easily. I want to pull it tight enough so it's not all loosey-goosey, like I said, with the heart. But you don't want to pull it so tight that it's bringing everything in. A fine line, I say, a fine line. Okay, I will have to speed this one up as well. And... not torture you with this whole thing. Okay, I'm finishing this one up. It's a little sloppier than I'd like. <laughs> that is my own fault, obviously. But it is what it is. Well, that didn't go the right way. I messed that up. So, um, Janice, I hope this helps. Now, I had another question, and if you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, if you have comments, <laughs> please be nice. As I say, I am no expert. Oh, look at that. I crossed a couple times. Um, I will answer to the best of my abilities as quickly as I can. Um, Sky, I believe your name is. I don't want to use your whole username just in case, but um, asked if I wash, pre-wash my fabrics. If I buy yardage or I buy used fabrics um, or there are fabrics that are larger than, say, this square here, um, larger than five inch. No, uh, no of the, I don't do the two and a half inch long jelly roll fabrics pre-cuts, and I don't do charm packs, no matter what size they are. I don't do them because they will make a mess. They'll shrink up. They'll fall apart. It's just weird. Um, I could do them if I hand washed them but I'm too lazy for that so I'm just filling in spaces here um, so yeah I um, do pre-wash my fabrics partly because they hold chemicals and if you know me if you've been around for any length of time I do not like chemicals and um, I try to avoid as many of them as possible. And if, um, and new fabrics are treated with sizing and chemicals to make them stand pretty, sit on the bolt pretty, um, repel water and stuff. So wash and dry them, um, use a mild detergent, you know, cotton fabrics are cotton fabrics. Some are better than others. And so, yeah, that's what I do. I do pre-wash most of my fabric. I like the feel of it better. Um, I like the way I can use them better. So, yep, that's what I do. Okay. Well, neither of them are gorgeous, but they're done. Now, if, you, if I were to stitch this down on something, I'd probably stretch it all out and stitch it down. Um, and that would look better, 
and this one as well. So yeah, I hope that helps Janice and Sky. and thanks for joining me, and I'll be back in the next one. Not sure what probably the winter project um, that I'm doing with Corinne at To Be Loved Treasures by Corinne. Corinne and Susanna and a lot of uh, and someone else, um, Calm Creations, are putting together uh, several projects and they're going to be doing those. I don't know if I'm going to join in or not. Um, I have one or two projects on my mind, but I also have some other things that might be happening. So I am not going to promise to do anything uh, yet. Um, so <laughs> we shall see how the year plays out. And I will be back at least with the winter, the winter project um, that I'm working on. That'll be for the next couple of months. So thanks for joining me. Appreciate it very much. And be safe this New Year's Eve if I'm not back before that. Um, I am filming this on December, I have no idea what today is, December 27th. So do be safe if you go out or stay in <laughs> and you imbibe. Um, I do not. So um, just for my own reasons. And I hope you enjoy and um, have a safe one. Take care, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Bye.